Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Debunked. Debunked is a series where I react to videos and clips you send me on Telegram. And inshallah you'll find the link to my Telegram in the description of the video. The first clip shows me getting exposed by a Christian. Yes, I finally got refuted. Earth. So does that mean Jesus is God? Well, of course not. Because if pre-existence means you are God, then Jeremiah is also God according to the Bible. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart i appointed you as a prophet to the nations yeah i just forget about the prior verse that literally says yahweh is the one speaking yeah like it doesn't exist according to this muslim i don't know what he's responding to exactly i never said that jeremiah is god or that jeremiah is the one speaking in this verse the clip is from my video where i responded to the claim that i am statement in the new testament means that jesus is god let's watch the original clip in context and come back i am is not the name of god and the word yahweh doesn't exist a single time in the new testament so jesus did not claim divinity at best you can claim that jesus by saying before every Abraham was born I am that he pre-existed Abraham or his existence predates his birth on earth so does that mean Jesus is God well of course not because if pre-existence means you are God then Jeremiah is also God according to the Bible Jeremiah 1 verse 5 before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were born I set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations so for Christians to be consistent if they believe Jesus is God because of his pre-existence then they should also believe that jeremiah is also god because according to the bible he also pre-existed but of course christians are not consistent especially when it comes to jesus as you can see this is a simple argument responding to the i am statement and in my video i went into detail about how i am ego i mean greek doesn't mean yahweh or ehye asher ehye in hebrew just let you know i messaged side talks regarding this and he just saw it and never responded. Maybe because he was, he knew he was wrong. I, I don't know. I didn't respond because it's a waste of time. And when I did respond to you, I was right and you were wrong and you had to apologize. So humble yourself and accept the truth. Jesus alayhi salam is not God and God almighty is not a human being. Repent before it's too late. In 29 of the different surahs of the Quran, they begin with opening verses of mysterious letters as the scholars know them as that are just arabic letters that don't form any known words alif lam ra alif lam mim yasin taha like all these things and you they can't be translated because of this because the actual scholars themselves and the oral tradition that islam supposedly thrives from don't have a clue what they mean and if you don't know what they mean they can't be translated He's talking about al-huruf al-muqatta, which are Arabic letters that exist in the beginning of some chapters of the Quran. They are letters, and of course, they are translated. Alif, lam, mim are three letters. So we translate each letter separately. Alif, lam, mim. So for you claiming we can't translate them doesn't make any sense because they are translated. It's like the name of your God, Yahweh. According to Britannica.com, Yahweh, name of the God of the Israelites, representing the biblical pronunciation of Yahweh, the Hebrew name revealed to Moses in the book of Exodus. The name Yahweh, consisting of the sequence of consonants, Yod, He, Wow and he is known as the tetragrammaton. So the name of your god is just a translation of the consonants yod, he, wow, and he without any vowels. And put together, they give you Yahweh. And as soon as you try and translate it, you end up with awkward things like this Alif, Lam, Ra. These are the verses of the wise book. Alif, Lam, Ra. This is a book whose verses are perfected and then presented in detail from one who is wise and aware. Alif, Lam, Ra. These are the verses of the clear book. You know, it doesn't seem so clear if I, if you can't translate it. I mean, it kind of seems like it's unclear. Huh. But all right, that's not a contradiction. 
as I already explained, they are translated. This argument is made by many Christians trying to claim that the Quran is not clear because we don't know the meaning of these letters. Inshallah, I'll answer this doubt directly. According to Tafsir ibn Kathir, the wisdom behind mentioning these letters in the beginning of the surahs, regardless of the exact meanings of these letters, is that they testify of the miracle of the Quran. Indeed, the servants are unable to produce something like the Quran, although it is comprised of the same letters with which they speak to each other. Subhanallah, you only need to go to Tafsir ibn Kathir and you'll get your answer. But for some reason, Christians love to say ignorant and repeat the same nonsensical claims. These letters are from the Arabic alphabet and it is a response to those pagan Arabs who were masters of the Arabic language but claim they didn't understand the Quran and that it was a work of magic. And when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, they say, this is not but a man who wishes to avert you from that which your fathers were worshipping. And they say, this is not except a lie invented. And those who disbelieve say of the truth when it has come to them, this is not but obvious magic. The pagan Arabs who were masters of the Arabic language gave the Quran a supernatural origin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenged them to bring anything like the Quran and they failed miserably. These letters are a representation of the Arabic alphabet. So use them to try to falsify the Quran but you can't. And if you are in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant Muhammad, then produce a surah the like thereof and call upon your witnesses other than Allah, if you should be truthful. But if you do not, and you will never be able to, then fear the fire whose fuel is man and stones prepared for the disbelievers. And for more than 1400 years, nobody was able to meet the challenge of the Quran. And by the way, whenever these letters are mentioned, they are immediately immediately followed by a mention of the victory of the Quran and explain its miracle and greatness. Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of the wise book. Alif Lam Ra. This is a book whose verses are perfected and then presented in detail from one who is wise and aware. Alif Lam Ra. These are the verses of the clear book. The same verses he just said are proof against him. al huruf al muqatta'a are always followed by a mention of the miracle of the Quran. Alhamdulillah, I believe I refuted this doubt. So inshallah, next time anyone tries to bring up this argument, you will know how to respond. Now normally, as a Christian, I wouldn't be bothered by this. I don't hold to the doctrine of perfect preservation. Allahu Akbar, this is a clear admission of defeat. And the evidence of the corruption of the Bible is so severe that they can't say otherwise. I don't know why are we still debating whether the Bible is the word of God or not. If it's not preserved, then it is not the word of God. If anybody adds to the word of God, those additions aren't the word of God. Simple logic. But for some reason, Christians will tell you, yes, the Bible is not preserved. Yes, the Bible is corrupted, but we still believe in it. So how would you know which verse is true and which one is not? Subhanallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. Christians don't believe the book came down from the sky and has been untouched since. That would be silly. Instead, what Christians believe is that man wrote down the scriptures, they are products of man, that are inspired through the Holy Spirit, inspired through God. So God inspired some people to write, and those writings aren't perfectly preserved. So you still have the same problem. Which verse is preserved, and which one is not? I don't need to prove to anyone that the Bible is corrupted and not preserved anymore. Christian scholars and preachers are the ones saying that. I don't hold to the doctrine of perfect preservation. Christians don't believe the book came down from the sky and has been untouched since. Christian preachers are telling us that the Bible is not preserved. The debate is done. Allahu Akbar. And say truth has come and falsehood has departed. Indeed, is falsehood by nature ever bound to depart. So there was a video that came out very recently in which I'm comparing the size of the Quran to the size of the Holy Bible. And we actually just filmed this video like five seconds ago, but my producer had a great idea because he anticipated that Muslims would complain about this copy of the Quran that I presented that I'm using. The funny thing about this Quran is that this is the Quran that at least one very prominent Muslim likes to use. So what was it that you were saying about this not being the Quran that Muslims would use? Aren't you guys the ones that say that there's multiple versions of the Bible?
<laughs> Funny. I'm really confused. What's the point of the video? Is he trying to claim that the clear Quran English translation used by Brother the Warner is the same Quran revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? I am not trying to be funny, but I have no clue what he's talking about or the purpose of this video. And by looking at the comment section, it seems they are more confused than me. I don't know if he's trying to claim that the Bible is not corrupted or that the Quran is translated. I really don't know. Aren't you guys the ones that say that there's multiple versions of the bible <laughs> funny no it is not us who are saying there are multiple versions of the bible it is your own scholars according to the preface of the revised standard version of the bible it says yet the king james version has grave defects by the middle of the 19th century the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the king james version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision of the english translation so your issue is with christian scholars not us I don't hold to the doctrine of perfect preservation. Christians don't believe that the book came down from the sky and has been untouched since. Wow! I already responded to two of the reasons mentioned by this guy in a previous episode of Debunked. So only 98 to go. Muslim men are limited to four wives. But not Muhammad. He gets as many as he wants, thanks to a special decree of Allah. This is a big misconception and I believe some Muslims may also be confused about this. Yes, we Muslims are only allowed to marry up to four wives. And the question is, why did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have more than four wives? Well, simply because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one who put the limit of only four wives on the general Muslims is the one who excluded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from this command. That's it. The prophets of God are just like us. They submit themselves to the will of God Almighty. Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was allowed to marry more than four wives because he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sometimes had specific stipulations and obligations that were exclusive to him. Like for example, the night prayer Tahajjud. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was obligated to offer prayers at two thirds of the night, but it was only voluntary for the rest of the Muslims. This is Islam. And using this type of arguments to try and prove its false does it make any sense? Speaking of Muhammad's wives, when two of them shared his secrets with each other, Allah revealed a threat saying they could be replaced in his eternal word. Please tell me how this verse proves Islam is false. We don't believe the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were infallible. We don't believe in divine humans like you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected the Prophet's wives, may Allah be pleased with them, and ask them to repent, or they would be divorced from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and substitute with better wives. And because he didn't divorce them, they were the better wives. And they repented, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted their repentance. I know that the concept of repentance without human blood sacrifice is alien to you. But we Muslims aren't pagans. So we only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. And inshallah he is the most forgiving, the most merciful. Please remember God is not a human being and God doesn't die. Subhanallah, he was the only Muslim among his friends. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided all his 12 friends back to the truth. They came back to Islam, the only truth and the religion of all the prophets of God. We came to the end of this episode of Debunked. I hope it was beneficial. You can also watch this video about another episode of Debunked. And don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.